can't believe it. That's Clone Force 99. This is Wrecker, Hunter, Echo, Tech, and Crosshair. Obviously, we are different. We're all you're getting. Ha! We're all you need! They call themselves the Bad Batch. Experimental Unit Clone Force 99. The defective clones with the uh, desirable mutations. This is one meeting I don't want to miss. Another edition of the Dad Batch Podcast, episode 61. My name is Stevie Kicks, and I am your host in the pilot seat today. And with us, as always, the other Dad Batchers, your space daddies. First up, he's in a tree, <laughs> sitting, waiting, wanting, wishing. <laughs> it's Brian Cook. Hello. What's up, man? Catch me in a tree. How about that? Catch anything good lately? No, um, uh, sweet no. naps in a tree. <laughs> How are you, you doing, haven't man? lived until you've um, sat in a tree stand and taken a nap at seven in the morning. It's nice. A lot of hunting, a whole lot of nothing. So basically, a lot of hanging out in the forest. Are you good? I mean, yeah, I'm good. I had are... family. My 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 father um, was in town, so spent kind of the last week chauffeuring him around and doing different stuff and hanging out so that's awesome yeah man that's it cool um let's see football is life but football is also the opposite it's john rodriguez what's up man football is death okay football is life hey <laughs> What's up, dude? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good, good. Footy, been playing. Been playing a lot. Uh, and uh, I've been making stuff as usual, like Brian mentioned earlier. That was offline. And that's been most of the week. That was in the green room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no one heard that. Slushing and gushing. What's up? What's up? What's happening? Oh. Yeah, been slushing and gushing, working. From this home. just in. This just in. <clears throat> nothing. Absolutely yeah, nothing. No, nothing different. <laughs> Running. I just ripped one, dude. Oh my gosh. Your Sorry. dog? Rudy. You, you, didn't, you didn't hear that? It was no. loud. Rudy. Pat Rudy Patootie. Hell yeah, Rudy. Dude, he's looking at me like, what? He lays oh, it down. He's like, he's like, yeah. Oh, so many dog farts. And they're like, they're, they're like, like, what? Whoa. <laughs> what was that? Oh, Rudy. Oh, buddy. What a cutie pie. Oh. What a meatball. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Dude, does he slobber a lot? Oh, hell yeah. That's all he does. Yeah. Dude, that dog rules. Ooh, they stink now. <laughs> he looks fun. Love, love those dogs. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm good. Thank you. Hello, Bueller. Next, next up, this is my partner, Bueller. MC, clap your hands, but you can call him Ramey Shannaday. <laughs> What's up, man? How guess, are you? I guess I need to clap my hands now. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, even uh, is that one of the inside even joke John, friends? Brian, and uh, Joe are wondering what the heck we're talking about. What the fuck? Is that one of those inside? Yeah, I have no idea. I thought all I had an idea last time, you? but no. Yeah, yeah, you're wrong. What did you ask me? No is it? Is it? I thought it was like T, like T. T names, like names. Well, there, of T's. there you go, everybody. It's not T names. Yeah, because now you just said something silly. We can it's confirm not, it's not T names. Yeah. Remy, how are you, man? How's your week been? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, had had a couple event, couple events over the weekend. Uh, just been doing work and life and all that stuff. 
Didn't you guys have a big um, 501st event? Yeah, so for anybody in Southern California, that like historically, and I guess pre-pandemic, uh, there was always the big Paul Biani Library event out in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, and it was one of the biggest events the Garrison ever you know, had Those in any given year. Um, we would easily get close to 200 members show up for that from across the different clubs. So uh, the pandemic obviously had an impact on that for a few years. But then in the meantime, also the guy that was like the, our contact at that library moved to the Upland library. Um, and it took him a few years to kind of get things moving with the new library and the new city. Uh, but this was the first time of having what we hope will grow into that event just at a new venue. And arguably the venue is actually pretty good for what we were trying to do. They've got like a nice big courtyard, just like the Rancho Cucamonga library had a um, place for us to set up photo ops and booths and things like that. Um, but the city kind of had other things going on on the same day. And so they wanted things spread around a little differently. And so I think that there's, there's some feedback that we'll have for a follow-up call that we'll have with them, but it took several years to get that event built up to what it was. So we're, this was year one and we'll get this one going. Um, but it was a pretty good turnout. We had quite a few people, uh, a lot of members there. Um, and the turnout from the public was good too. That's I the remember. new Paul Biani. Basically like, that's, that's oh, what we are okay. hoping it will be. I remember that one. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That was a good troop. I remember I, we've done what before pre pandemic, we did them all. That yeah. was the May the 4th couldn't. one, right though. It didn't used to be at May the 4th. Uh, I'm thinking of the long troop. It was around that time, yeah. That's where I met you, Brian. Yeah, I think you yeah, and Tori. You, you and you and Tori were her seventh sister, and you were Canaan with right? Canaan, exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's where um, I dressed up as a Bith and then smashed my instrument. Yeah, you guys there. were That's all true. Bith. Yeah, was there. you guys yeah, were we all did, We did the Cantina band song. No, no, it, it was on like, purpose, Joe. You guys were rock and roll move, like yes, a rock star, hard. dude. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys were jizzing out. They were so jizzing all over the jizzing all over the place. They were jizzing on everyone, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> wow. We jizzed so hard that day. <laughs> wow. Okay. Are you making, did Jeez. I hear a snore? Music. Why is it so funny? It is music. No, but they were jizzing pretty hard. Yeah. All right. He's, in, he's in, back. In actuality. <laughs> He's back once again from Las Vegas to make sure the Death Star will be completed on schedule. It's schedule. Joe Lara. <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, Pretty good, well. dude. How are you? Doing well, man. Um, yep, I was, went back to Vegas again because uh, I love the band and the. You saw UU4? <laughs> Me too. Dude. How was so the second time? It was just as good. We were in seats this time, so it was a different angle. And. Nice it allowed us to, to take in more of the view because when you're close, you're looking at the band and then maybe the screen, you're, you're doing like a lot of rubbernecking, like looking all over yeah. the place. But when you're back, it's more like sitting in a theater and you Sweet. can absorb it all. Dude, it just makes like, it, and it's funny to, when you look at the crowd and the people next to you and you kind of like, everybody has their mouth open. They're like, yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, it's, yeah, it, it's ridiculously cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. And it's all my age. Like, everybody's like freaking 50, you know? Like, so it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. That's good. cool, though. You, you were able to do both. Yeah. 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 I was watching, uh, What's Inside, the video, mm -hmm. the, the, the channel on YouTube, and mm -hmm. they go into the, what is it called? Is it the, the, the sphere? Dome? The, the sphere. sphere. The sphere. Yeah. And he was, yeah, he went like on every single level that you could go at including the floor and he was saying that the best spot is up mm -hmm. like all the way up in the center mm -hmm. because then then you're like completely surrounded oh, yeah. by the dome yeah and and the crazy thing is that they're going to be able to use this facility for like um uh uh like world events like like for instance when you go to the UN right and you see all those like yeah. uh, representatives from all the countries there. They've got their headphones on because they've got the translator like in their ears, right? Well, the audio, for, this is what he says in the video. The audio, uh, I think it's called like uh, form beaming or beam forming speakers. They can literally uh, shoot an audio track to each individual seat 
in the facility. So hmm. like I could be hearing English without headphones or anything. And yes. the person next to me could be hearing a completely different language. Wow. Okay. So I, I read that too. And I, I don't know if I talked about this on the show or not. If I did forgive me, but Do it. years and years and years ago in a previous life, I worked for a company and we did media post-production. We had a sound stage on um, CBS's Radford studios lot here. And the guy that created the MP3 from Fraunhofer Labs was demoing something that he had. And it was at the time it was called Usono, which was like his brand name for this thing. And it was this 3D spatial audio technology, but it used active noise cancellation. So he could actually create point audio sources within the 3D space of the room. Hmm. So the, 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 the demo was like this little fairy that would fly around the room and sing and talk and whatever. And he could make, he had a joystick on the control console and he could actually make her fly up to your ear and whisper something into your ear. You would hear it, but the person sitting next to you would not. It was crazy. And that was, was like, a lot of years ago. That's and that, it was, it was 15, wow, yeah, 15 plus years ago. Um, and he could, like, it was really weird. He's like, he's like, if you really want to trip out, watch this. And he moved it just a little bit to put the source of the audio inside your head. And it would sound like the voice was coming from inside your head. And it was really disorienting. <laughs> well, Joe, when, when you're sitting there watching it and from the seats, were you just waiting for like Palpatine to jump down and be like, this <laughs> is the grand Republic. Dude, imagine, imagine watching that. episode two or episode three there, like movies. You're like, you're just like in the Senate. Oh yeah. man. In the pot. It, it does. It's super steep. So it does kind of have that feel just like that whole auditorium that we're used to watching in Star Wars. So it's, it was really yeah. cool. Yeah. It was rad. Sweet. It was rad. And then, um, I, I'm starting to run more. I'm starting to run more. And, oh, uh, yeah. and I looked it up cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to mess like, you know, skip out of a run, my running just because I'm in Vegas. So I looked up, uh, is it safe to run on the strip and like what, what time and you know, I want to get mugged or whatever, you know? So mm -hmm. Vegas is a little dodgy. And yeah. sketchy. But dude, it's sketchy. like, dude, doing this. oh yeah, dude. But that was later on at night. So <laughs> like, yeah, I went, went for a nice run before the sun came up. The lights are still out. It's, it's kind of surreal to run in right. Vegas. And it's empty. That's so cool. That was kind of cool. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing good though, man. Doing good. That's good, man. You haven't lived until you've walked or ran the Vegas Strip at 5 a.m. from the night before. Probably you, see the sun, you see the sun coming up and you're like, what have I done? It's a very common thing, actually. <laughs> yep. Okay, so it's time. We teased this yesterday. It's time for the Dad Batch Podcast Holiday Special Chrome Tono Volume 2. Yesterday was October 10th, and that was World Mental Health Day. And research shows that more than 50% of all lifetime mental disorders start by the age of 14. Children's Mental Health needs champions, so we are pleased to announce that our fundraising efforts throughout the holiday season will go directly towards the On Our Sleeves movement for children's mental health a nonprofit organization committed to breaking stigmas and helping families talk about mental health with their children. On Our Sleeves provides free mental health resources for parents, teachers, and caregivers across the United States. Join the Dad Batch this year as we support On Our Sleeves. Once again, starting on November 1st and running through Christmas Eve, the Dad Batch will be adding new items every week to the Chrome Tono giveaway. And just like last year, every dollar you donate here will help another will be another chance to win. We have so many items lined up for this year's prizes. And yes, that's prizes with an S. This year, we will have first, second, third place winners and a grand prize winner. All will be announced in a special release of the show on Christmas Eve. And since making the announcement yesterday, our phones and DMs have been going crazy with people from around the world and around the community wanting to donate items to the prize packages this year. 
But back to the cause we're supporting. According to pre-pandemic numbers, one in five children is living with a mental illness. We can all feel when there is a youth mental health crisis and we all know someone who's been impacted, but stigma remains. Children don't wear their thoughts on their sleeves, so we don't know what they're going through. Many of us didn't grow up talking about mental health, so that's why On Our Sleeves was created. Please help us supporting their important mission by donating. You can learn more about the On Our Sleeves movement for children's mental health by browsing at onoursleeves.org. On Our Sleeves is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and your donations will be tax deductible. So again, starting on November 1st, we're going to be blasting our socials and start taking donations through a special landing page that we've created with in our partnership with On Our Sleeves. So keep your eyes on our socials, especially starting November 1st, and we'll keep spreading the word in the meantime. Nice. Solid theme song pick too, Stevie. Come, yeah. Come, come and get your love, man. Come and get your love. I love support it. These kids, yeah. so support these kids and their families. That's that's really what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Um, doing it. Well, thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. If you'd like to rep your support for the show, pick up a, an exclusive shirt or some stickers at thedadbatch.com. This garbage is nothing like clone armor. Looks a little tight on you, old man. Yeah, at least I know how to wear it. That's right, everybody. It's time for the weekly workbench. All right, gentlemen, who is working on what? Nothing. (laughs) All right. I've been trying to fix Stormbreaker. That's it. Nothing. I've been busy. Nothing to nothings? I've been busy. I, um... (laughs) I finished printing all the Paz stuff. I started working on the on the blaster, um, his Ooh. his big machine gun blaster. Big boy. But then that jetpack, oh man! And I I messaged some of you guys this, but so the jetpack one piece finally finished printing mm-hmm. after like two weeks, and then when I Damn. pulled it off the print bed, I was just like, I was kicking myself because I printed it with like the back plate attached to it. I didn't modify the file. Like I should have, you can't, <sighs> can't do that. So I was like, Oh, okay, well I'll just dremel it off or whatever. But once you start cutting into a 3d print and it's missing the walls and stuff, it's just, it's gross. Oh no. So, yeah. So I'm Re- just Re- restarting have, it. Couldn't you have just printed a back plate and then done back plate and then back plate with jetpack? And then all, that's all you have to swap is the back plate, rather than the jetpack. Hmm. It's actually solid. Well, it's, but he already cut like, into it, though. Yeah. So. Oh, you it, did cut into it. Okay. I thought you were saying like you didn't want listen, to cut into it, John. It's in the recycling Oof. bin. Yeah, it's a dump. bummer. So, dude, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, oh, it's gone. <laughs> I was gonna say I'll 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 put it on a man. If it was me, I'd be in a fit of rage. It would be destroyed. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, straight but, to the trash but the good news is uh, I, I kind of like channeled my frustration of of not working on the file to now overworking the the machine gun file um, so I completely hollowed out the body of the blaster it's gonna like be able, it's gonna be able to accept like a circuit board speakers lights smoke I got a big old LCD screen that's gonna be on there it's it's going to be cool. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I think that's it. I mean, the K1, like, like I said, that K1 is just blasting through files. I in, in the last two weeks, I've gone through uh, 16 rolls of filament. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Six, 16 kilograms. Of, I mean, wow. Yeah, it wow. adds up. It adds up. So, wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, I think that's it for me. Wow. <laughs> um, well, uh, I've been working on a few things. Um, I uh, spoke with Darren from Great Ape Studios uh, like a week or so ago. Um, Every time I hear you. That's great. Ape. Oh, uh, 
Well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, he was making files for Shin Hati and for Balin Skull, and I was should, and I was like, I'm gonna, you know. Jokes. Yeah, you should have saved that one. Anyway, um, so I was speaking to him, and anyway, he sent me He's his files dog. to test out to print. So I printed the gauntlets and the shoulders, and I actually got to painting them and stuff, and they look pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, nice. If you can see in the camera, damn, I'm like hitting the mic and stuff. Oh, um, yeah, dude, that looks good. Looks good, dude. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Now, I see that you added the little fake screen text. So um, there's there's a couple of groups on Facebook already, obviously, and uh, there's a, one dude that makes. So everyone sort of is familiar with the Mando Pewter, which is like the the animated screen that people can buy for their Mandalorian kits and stuff. So this dude basically makes a similar product, but it's like a budget version. So you know those, <laughs> they're like those cards. I guess when we were kids, like you would turn it one way or the other, and it that the, the the image would animate or whatever. That's like so he did. Lenticular. Is that is that what that's called? Okay, so he made versions that. of these screens with that, and and so they're like twenty euros. I sent him twenty euros. He's gonna send me. So these were just the paper mockups to see if they would fit on the screen, which they that's do cool. obviously because they're measured correctly. Um, but I will be getting those that they're just it's just the, both screens that alternate. It's nothing crazy. But it's a nice cool. alternative to just oh, having a static yeah. screen. For we sure, we should have asked Marcus last week why they put those names on the so, gauntlet. Yeah, I, it, as far as I know, I think the artists were just literally, literally just messing around, and it doesn't what, mean. What are the it, name, What are the names well, on there? Well, as far it's like Luke, Leia, Han. Chewy and, and all like sorts an of things. Egg. And, yeah, yeah. Pe- people think it's like, oh, it's a hit list. Oh, Balin's after the, and it's like, no, no like, don't read, it's, don't, don't it's read the too deep into it. Fun. It's, it's just, just the Easter people egg. working. Like, what should we put in there? You know, like yeah. no one's gonna read this, and then it's like, no, they like, know, ah. they know someone's gonna read it. Come yeah, on, they well, got it, dude. Well, I don't know. You don't. You assume it won't be that it's, visible. It's dollar bets, man. It's like. How long will it take for people to start talking about these things? It's Dollar like bet. the it's like the Bubba Fett chain code when he was like, "This is my family. This is my chain code." And yeah. like people, like the like right after deciphered the episode, it. people like deciphered it, and it was like it was literally like Django Fett, and then like his whole family line. And... Right. But, but that actually, like that text, actually made sense and told told part of the story that we wanted to hear. Someone should have just put Boba Fett where. <laughs> it's like over and over again but anyway yeah so I, I i finished these shoulders and with the gauntlets too obviously it looks and so also... good like like it's hammered metal it yeah, does look like paint, hammered yeah. metal. The applications look great thank you well well the 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 model itself was really well done so i, I it didn't take much to um make it look like this but um Is it really just, happy with how it it's not out. just black though because there's like a sheen there's a wash over it and um is there a little bit I mean, patina on there or no? Like, like yeah, I, I didn't do what they did because what because okay. I didn't have I I, I kind of use what I have in terms sure. of paint and and uh, if I have so, something I can use I'll try to use it to replicate a different product whatever. So I didn't have ex- the exact things that I think they used. Uh, so I did something else that that turned out okay in in, in my opinion. But there's a wash and I also did like a a, a spray and wipe thing with like a turquoise paint. Because there's like a bit of a turquoise wash over it. But yeah, they look nice. Thank you. Oh no. Fire alarm. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll, John. <laughs> yeah, something in the get under the table. Going. Evacuate. Low uh, crawl. Low crawl. Get, get under the table. Who Smoke is that? Uh, Stand in the doorway. It, it, it's my fire check? alarm. Stand in the Low doorway. Check. Everything cool? Uh, that's an earthquake. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> no, 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 cool. Get no, it's Baby hot. Here, sure. It's really hot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But, oh, and I, yeah, and I've been making helmets. I, I, I made some uh, clone helmets. Cloning. Uh, yeah, those, last week. Those ones you painted look great. Thank yeah, you. That set, that set of three. Yeah. Very, the very the nice. Bad Batch set that I just saw 
on I also the did that. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, that was a private commission Ooh. for someone. I need to make you some then... I need to make it though. Hold on. Maybe oh yeah. Crosshair could use some work, but the rest look pretty good. Uh huh. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I, I uh, on the side I painted those clones, so I'm gonna keep doing this little like series of three. I I, I, I was really ambitious in the beginning with five or wanting to do five, but three is more uh, manageable just in terms of casting and painting. Or like buddy cop show, dude. You gotta do waxer and boil. I will eventually. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm gonna do that point. one eventually. I'm gonna yeah, do waxer nice. and boil and a uh, and a cop cop and roll. That's unfortunate. <laughs> like Rex, Rex and yeah. a survival so first. No, well, I don't have a Rex. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Special. Rex is a different it, mold. I, I'm using the clone, the the molds I have. Yeah, you can. Uh, so just make yeah. time. generic clones. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah, you're muted. Steven. One second. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, turn that off. John, we're done with you. Okay. Bye bye. All right. <laughs> Steven's like, so... <laughs> please stop. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I picked up a Black Series uh, Stormtrooper helmet, and, and it, nice. I couldn't find one that was plain, so I got the one that's like I don't even know what what do they call this one? I don't remember. It's, it's got like the yellow a... markings. It's like the oh, is that the mortar guy? Second? The is mortar that... one from uh, yeah, the Mandalorian, from, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna paint this back down to all white, but then I'm gonna go at it with my Dremel, and I'm ultimately gonna turn this into one of the. Uh, night troopers okay. so some of the patches will be like gray some of them will be the gold leaf so i'm going to do all that so i'm just going to nice try and try to this was a good uh inexpensive way to get a rogue one style helmet yep. that i could do that too um and you know it, because it's kind of the injective molded plastic i can actually like a dremel into this with the dremel yeah. and, and get some some detail and texture into those little grooves so that uh, if I had done that with a plastic, like a, a vacuum formed kit, the plastic's not thick enough to really get that mm -hmm. kind of depth to it. So this this is the way to go. And that, you can get the, the yellow the plain, off easy. Well, the plain white yeah. one is really jacked up in price, right? The plain, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah like even on shot. eBay, even on eBay, not including shipping, which is astronomical by itself, they wanted like two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, oh, one yep. of the uh, I got one. All white ones. One? You can you can order one right now through Hasbro for the normal retail price, but it says that it doesn't ship until like March or April of next year. Yeah. So forget yeah, that. They don't have I, any. Got, but I got a little bit of acetone. will take the yellow off of this, and I'll be good to go. I'm going to paint it all white and start over, anyways. So it's fine. That's it for me. Word. Short week. Yeah, just we'll get been back busy. on building. Haven't so. been home. Sometimes it comes in and out. Joe's been at the yeah. sphere. I, I haven't stopped watching bro. you two. John is making up for Joe and I's lack of I'm building. I'm picking up everybody's slack. Yeah. Just out of necessity, really. Oh, damn. But, nope. Oh, okay. Send some pizza. <laughs> Is that what's burnt? Thank you. Uber eats. That 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 was, 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 that was <laughs> It doesn't look burnt, but the fire alarm went off. Here, eat out. this. All right, <laughs> that's fair. Delivery. Tell Nara, thank you for that quality content that we just got. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there you go. I will eventually. Hey, Ramy. Hey, Stephen. <laughs> We're being hailed. This encryption's new. This might take a while. All right. We're going to start with the sad news this time. Um, so as everybody in the community knows, um, last week we lost Shauna Tripsik, uh, costume designer. Uh, she was uh, taken from us too young at the age of 56 years old. So um, she was a native of Southern California, received her first costume designer credit in 1990 for the horror film uh, titled Mom, and then quickly amassed many credits. In 93, she worked as the costume designer for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and then went on to work on projects including Firefly, Angel, Dollhouse, Torchwood, Cabin in the Woods, and many more. She was a lifelong Star Wars fan, but she came into the world of Star Wars from a costume design perspective with The Mandalorian Seasons 2 and 3 and The Book of Boba Fett. And most recently, Ahsoka. Sean and her team were gearing up to start working on Mandalorian Season 4 as soon as the ongoing SAG strike ended. So she was nominated and received many awards throughout her career, including three primetime Emmy nominations for episodes of The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett, including one of those uh, Emmy nominations for Season 3 of The Mandalorian. So that one's not even, like, it's a nomination, but they haven't even 
voted yet, so she could still bring that one home. Uh, she was nominated for three Costume Designers Guild Awards and won in 2022 for her work on The Book of Boba Fett. Uh, in a statement from StarWars.com, so they said she was considered something of a Star Wars historian by her peers, reading every making of book she could find to better understand the techniques used in the films during various eras. eras. In her studies, she specifically sought out material that included discussions between George Lucas and his designers and concept artists, which became the foundational ideas of her never-ending research into Star Wars costume design. Dave Filoni said Shauna had a deep love and appreciation for Star Wars. You can see that in every piece of work she did with us. She loved everything about being a part of these stories, including connecting with fans and being a part of that community. I feel like she's always been part of Star Wars. Her costumes tell a story, providing the suggestion of a life experience that happened before the cameras rolled. I loved collaborating with her, and I will miss her presence. Favreau added, her creativity brought this world to life. She will be deeply missed both as a friend and a colleague couple of fun facts. Um, Shauna used her own wedding dress as the foundation to build a ball gown for Marina Baccarin's character in an episode of Firefly. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that right there gives you an idea of just how passionate she was about what she did. She was willing to yeah. cut up her own wedding dress. Creativity just comes from all over. Yeah. yeah it, and it come, when it comes, you got to got to roll with it. Otherwise you're, you're going to snuff it out. So, and she also loved pink flamingos and tried to include them on as many costumes as she could get away with. So um, I don't know if anybody else has any anything else they want to add. I had the thanks to a, a, a friend of the podcast. I had the opportunity to meet her in my Din costume at uh, uh, at Mosh Eisley when it was in San Diego, and uh, and she had very positive things to say about it. It was a great experience. So I mean, that was something that I'll remember forever. Yeah, I obviously I didn't go to that, and that was kind of like it felt like after that. I was seeing her like a lot on socials and stuff and I didn't really know who she was and she just seemed super cool and super accessible. So that's awesome Yeah, that she was there and she was super into it and hearing that story of what you just said about how much she was passionate about it and studied and that's, that's, uh, it's too bad. Yeah. Rest. When I, when I met her, I had the opportunity to tell her and it was, it was so noisy in that venue. I, I hope she heard what I said because what I, I told her is I said, listen, without, without people like her and what she does, this hobby wouldn't exist for us. So this is essentially yeah. like what we do is a gift to us from the costume designers, including her. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, we very much build our whole hobby and livelihood around the, the hard work that her and her teams put into these things. So um yeah so much work very, very goes, tragic goes into those costumes it's really crazy yeah and you can tell you can tell when you're on set and what you see on screen um the love and and attention to detail and and passion that goes into those things so yeah. well we we can't do a moment of silence it wouldn't it would be kind of weird to do a moment of silence on a podcast so we will do a minute of uh dedication here Shauna with this little clip. Put your helmet on. Creating, you know, 60 brand new Mandalorians um, from the three different tribes was amazing. We got to do a survivor look. Um, we got to do the original um, covert look. And then we got to uh, explore the Bo Katan group, you know, former, I guess, Death Watch or former Night Owls. So we called them the Marines. It was very much influenced by the animation. It was fun to create each individual art with them all wearing basically the same armor, but being able to distinguish one from another. Basically what we did was we sort of created an assembly line in the creation of the armor itself. But then we found unique ways of, especially with the survivors, um, replacing bits of armor with um, like, what would you find on a planet that had been through an apocalypse? wood and leathers and furs and you know, whatever you could put together to protect yourself but because you're from the religion of the mandalorians you would find a way to sculpt that into traditional shapes b2 battle droid so that's cool each individual mandalorian tells a story and that's always what i tell my artists i want to know the story behind the choices that we're making for every crack every stitch there you go that was sweet that was yeah. nice, Steven. You know what's funny is I was just watching that video right now, and I just realized that uh, when they were painting helmets, 
They were doing that in the parking lot. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> like but that was Judah, that, right? Yeah. It like, looked like last minute touch ups or something. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, talk about dedication. Yeah. We're like, We're like oh, we quick, don't have a shop. Going. We'll do yeah. it right here. <laughs> yeah. Um I had I didn't I didn't get to meet her at the time, but I did get to be uh for a little while in her warehouse where they were putting the suits together and um one of her assistant costume designers told me that they had made sixty five different costumes, all unique for season two or sorry, season three of, of, of the Mandalorian. Um, and, and spoke about kind of how they were building them to match those different tribes. And you could see that in the way that they arranged them on set and things like that. So, um, there was a lot of work. I mean, and, and she had said that they had spent like three months just doing nothing but working on those suits. Um, and those sequences with, with those characters were very important to them. So, Rest well. Yep. Yep. May the force be with you. Okay. Um, moving on in the news. So um, seven classic Star Wars games are getting a physical release on the Nintendo Switch coming in December. Uh, so they're calling this the Star Wars Heritage Pack. It's a collection of seven fan favorite games originally released during the 90s and early 2000s. So the pack includes The Force Unleashed, Republic Commando, Episode One Racer, uh, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, Knights of the Old Republic, and Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. So the pack will retail for $60, which is actually $20 cheaper than the current uh, eShop cost for the like digital downloads of those same games. And there, it's, like I said, it's a physical release. So anybody that likes collecting the physical packaging for the games, um, this will be this will be for you. Um, and that will be available at uh, kind of all the major retailers, including Target, Best Buy, anywhere where you'd get your video games from. So I don't have a lot of detail on this. I really just have a headline in my notes. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything else to add, but I'm going to put a pin in this and say that it's something that I'll keep an eye on for upcoming uh, news. But uh, according to Screen Rant, there's rumors going around that uh, Warner Brothers could be bought up by NBC Universal. Um, not really Star Wars related news, but we do keep track of the, the film industry stuff. John's eyes got really big there. Um, so that would be interesting because that would bring the DC universe into NBC Universal's world. So I don't know if that, I mean, who knows? So Universal's got all of the horror films like in Frankenstein and Dracula and all of those, right? So maybe we could see a DC, uh, horror verse, uh, mashup sometime. Frankenstein, Batman. <laughs> yeah. Batman versus the Wolfman. The Mummy Polka Dot. I think I think there was Man. an old comic Batman versus Dracula. If I don't oh. if I recall correctly. Oh, I know. There you go. I'm down. The polka Dot. Dracula <laughs> Flash. Peacemaker versus the Man, Mummy. This sounds amazing. <laughs> the Flash. <laughs> Wait, who's buying who? Universal would be buying, and I, I'm assuming it's still NBC Universal. I don't know how they, you know, they keep changing their names and everything. But Universal would be buying Warner Brothers. Weasel wow. and the Werewolf. Did the yeah. Flash do that bad? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm trying to recoup. Oh man, the but answer is like yes. <laughs> you guys liked it. It was fantastic. You, you didn't your line. I, I I actually enjoyed the Flash movie. So and and I will say that some of the fun might have been just the fact that we were together in Atlanta and we watched it I together. So like that that actually added to that. the experience. Not gonna lie, but I you actually do think I still enjoyed the film. You watched it with friends, filled yeah. with ultras, and it made it better. Got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but let's be fair. Those ultras, we were only drinking those at the show, and they were long since worn off by the time we get home any given night. Like that didn't. It didn't last long. <laughs> so I uh, got two emails from a listener. So thank you very much for sending those in. Again, a uh, friendly reminder, email us at news at the And uh, your story oh. could get read on the show and we'll give you credit. Um, these two emails came in. Uh, so one of them actually we had talked about before. Disney, Pri Disney Plus has price hikes coming. Um, and there's various... Uh, Various differences. The, honestly, the, the combinations of packages between the ESPN and Hulu and Disney, like it's a little too complicated to get into. And the fact of the matter is, is the price hikes kick in tomorrow 
as we record this. So by the time this podcast comes out, it'll be too late. Um, but if anybody's listening to the live stream, um, it, you know, it, you'd want to go in and buy like a year subscription now if you want to lock in the current pricing, because as of tomorrow, the 12th of October, the new pricing kicks in. Um, Disney Parks also um, has some price hikes. So effective immediately, um, I, I think this is both California and Florida, um, but effective immediately, we've got uh, single day ticket prices are increasing from anywhere between five and $15 per ticket, depending on the day and kind of the, the, the way they classify the tickets. Um, they, they give them based on their prediction of how busy the day is going to be, they give it a tier. So the higher tier tickets are going to be a higher price hike compared to the other ones. Um, so multi-day ticket increases range between um, anywhere are going up between anywhere between $25 and $65 a ticket. So, and then magic key prices, which can you even buy, like they exist, but can you buy one? I think they're on renewal only right now. Right. So those are increasing depending on the key uh, between 50 and $150 per pass. And oddly enough, like the most expensive one and the cheapest one are the two that are 50 and then the 150 is the ones in the middle. So they're yeah, really, they're gouging. Like they're gouging. They figured yeah. they wouldn't be doing themselves any favors by raising the price of the cheapest one because they yeah. price out people that were only able to get that one. And yeah. um, so really, they're just gouging the middle class. Well, the cheapest one, Typical. too, the, when you can go is like the weirdest times. I mean, have you guys been to Disneyland yeah. lately at all? No. no I, man, I looked I, yesterday I at the price. I, I can't. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. renew my pass, dude. That was like... I, I didn't renew what last year because it was just getting too crazy. Yeah. And I mean, Yo, I know like, sometimes. Go ahead. Like, like the Disney Plus thing increasing. Like, I, I, like, I knew that was going to happen when they started off at six bucks. Because yeah. it was like, you it can't was, offer all oh. this stuff for six bucks. Yeah. It was too good so, to be true at the time. So, like, them, them being like in the same what line as like Netflix or whatever, like, that's fine. But, like yeah, like Remy is saying, increasing the middle tier of the passes, one hundred fifty bucks. That's just ridiculous. I'm just curious yeah. as to. I feel like because didn't they raise prices not that long ago too? I'm just curious as like how every year it's like every land. year they raise it's still it busy, yeah. right? Like that. That was still, maybe it's still my busy. point. They keep that's, raising. Them. That's why they get away with it because they still yeah. are basically maxed out every up. day. Yeah. And yep. the Disney Plus thing, I don't. know. I have the whole package. I'm on the legacy one or whatever because we signed up when it first came out. Because I use that's, Hulu and that's ESPN not gonna too, that's so. not gonna renew at that price. That's all right though. But I use I have three different channels off of it. Like it's worth it to me. My 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 whole thing with Disneyland. <laughs> I haven't been to Disney World, so I can't yeah. uh, comment on that. But Disneyland, yeah. it's like everything right now is under construction. Like Ooh. so, even if you went in on like a daily pass or whatever. Yeah, you're only getting half of it. Yeah. So I don't know. Not worth it. My opinion. Yeah. Haven't been back since we had that epic evening. What epic evening are you referring you to? When John weren't there. So I don't know. <laughs> Joe. It Ramey was really and... just you. And... No, I was not there. I, I, I was there. I was in, every... I was in a different part of the park. Every time you tell the story, Brian, you say that I was there, but I was not. <laughs> so Joe and I, <laughs> yeah, I I couldn't, I didn't have, I didn't have passes, and, and I, I and didn't want to buy one for just the one. No, you yeah, I think Luke was there. No, you always do. You know what though? No. Uh, John wasn't there. Luke. No one was there. Just you and Joe were there. No, we went a different day though with Amy, and that was a blast. Wait, was that before? Oh that yeah, was that was day. that was celebration. That was way before. Yeah. yeah, that was before we moved. Before we moved, we had with Amy. And that was That's super right. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was a fun day, too. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. a super fun day. We all crammed in that, that, that Casey Jr. train. <laughs> like, so fun. <laughs> John kept going, like, I don't know. You, you want to go? And we're like, dude, let's go. We're on Amy's program. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to drag you guys along, you know? Dude, but you're, you're not, not all like, We're all dads. We're at we Disneyland, know. dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like a two year old was running the show, you know? It's yes. Like, all right, guys. I'm sorry. Dude, That's Winnie the Pooh is one of my favorite rides. Like, straight yeah. up. When you have a little kid, fun. it gives you the excuse to get on the kitty rides. That's really oh, yeah. what it is, you know? Hey, the Peter Pan ride is awesome. All good. That's that's we sat that her up on the long though, man. Like to nobody goes to the toad one, right? That one's just weird. But then <laughs> those wild rides for drug addicts, dude. Yeah, that one's John. Trip. You should go 
Like, <laughs> like where? Excuse me. Frozen. Prep, prep first, and then get on that toad ride. On which yeah. ride? I'm sorry. Toad's wild ride. Mr. Toad's Toad, wild ride. Mr. Toad's wild oh, ride. Oh yeah, I, that's a trippy ride. I'm not looking frogs. Just, yeah, but you, yeah. if you prepare for that ride, <laughs> it's cool. I, I, I haven't been in a couple years. Uh, we had the key, the golden, the, the magic key, and uh, I uh, don't have it anymore. So I feel like so many people that we know they gave up their passes, they were done. So it's kind it's of just got Dude, so expensive. I still like going. It wasn't and, easy. It wasn't easy. And not only that's that, for sure. it cool. was it was right after COVID, so they they had like a half of the capacity full. So anytime you wanted to go, you had to reserve on the app. Yeah, that most was of the time it pain. was yeah. blacked out because of the capacity. Do they even still though, do that? Like, the park was half full. I don't know. I haven't been in you two years. You still have to make a no reservation idea. with your pass. Uh, that's ending know. soon. That's I, ending. I can't remember. Okay. I heard. Yeah, because we had some. When, when all my family came into town, they also yeah. made a trip up there. Oh, cool. And they had to make a reservation, but there was there was uh, something on the website saying at a certain day coming. Like I don't know. It's probably already uh, ended by now. Like by that this day, true. you don't have to do it anymore. Or exactly. Something. Yeah. 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 That's good. Because it was annoying. Because you're like, yeah. stupid annoying. I tell Amy like, "Hey, you want to go?" And she's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Oh, wait. Let me check the yeah. The, yeah. the availability if if I can take my th- poor you know my poor two year old to <laughs> freaking." Now we also say people. this knowing that a lot of people have never been and can't go because of oh for sure and all that. first world problems. First Come on. Problem yeah. All the yeah. Way. yeah. Well, I can't even afford it now anyway. So that those no. were the good times. It, it, it was nice. It's still a magical place. When it people. lasted, I love to go. It's very magical. Oh. I, I like what's that. your favorite food there? Like like the when you go you have Ronto to get this, wrap. Ronto the Ronto wrap. wraps or Ronto anything wrap. in the Star Wars sure. and the drinks the uh the, the like the Mailaroon drink. I yeah. love um I love wearing a black t-shirt and and getting the what do they call those those little uh beignets? Uh, beignets and just getting the powder yeah. all <laughs> over the F- all powder, over the yeah. F- place. Getting too. the powder yeah. sugar yeah. powder sugar <laughs> everywhere, yeah. Yo, and you got more than beignets. <laughs> yeah. Mar- so um, back to uh some oh, we were talking about kind of the different superhero stuff earlier uh, mark edwards is in the chat on uh the, the instagram live stream and he asked what we thought about Dare- daredevil going back to the drawing board i haven't heard Ooh. anything about this so i'll let you yeah, guys Brian. talk about it Wait, what? i just yeah. saw the i just saw the headline right before we started recording but I think they're I've been letting all, it all day. They're letting yeah. all the original writers go. Well, apparently the the big the big wigs were not happy with what they were handed, and they oh, were from She Hulk. So, hmm. No, from the new Daredevil that they that they just wrote. So apparently they fired the writers and the directors, and are starting from scratch <sighs> again. Wow. Yeah, but wow, but all right. But is it what, what? is it still Charlie the Cox? Writers she Hulk was saved? good, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, the writers <laughs> are just, uh, we're we're we're, we're, re, we're rewatching it right now, actually. We or you? I'm serious, dude? Yeah. <laughs> no, like me and the family, we love She Hulk. It's such a good series. Do you like the twerk? I'll add the cricket sounds in post. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, move, moving on in the news. So uh, yesterday, as we record this, uh, bookstores saw the release of Star Wars Crimson Climb by E.K. Johnston. Um, so the synopsis on this one, uh, Kira listens to the dreams and promises of a boy with a reckless smile, only to be torn away from him and returned to the White Worms gang while Han made his way to freedom. Now freedom seems like a luxury she can't afford while she concentrates on survival and despairs of never of ever leaving Corellia. But her fortunes seem to turn when a representative of the crime syndicate, Crimson Dawn, plucks Kira from captivity and brings her to the syndicate's leader, the mysterious and mercurial Dryden Voss. Voss offers Kira an opportunity she's never had before, the chance to build something resembling a comfortable life if she can prove her worth to his organization. With failure meaning certain death, Kira knows she must immerse herself in the merciless, murderous world of Crimson Dawn. What she doesn't know is just who she will be if she survives. So, um... I've read several of their of E.K. Johnson's books. She's done a whole series around um, around Padme. What are you laughing about? What are you laughing about? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I got a cough. I've read several other of her books. Um, she's done several over uh, 
around Padme and her uh, her handmaidens, which are actually pretty cool because they get into like how the handmaidens handled being in disguise. And some of that was a little, almost kind of like James Bond ish, which I thought was pretty cool. And then obviously she wrote the Ahsoka novel too. So um, this is the next one out for her. Uh, last up in the news, uh, and I don't have a lot on this one. So the SAG strike continues to go on, um, but we promise to keep in, keep notes on this each week. So I do know that studio leaders and SAG leaders met uh, again this past Monday and again today, but I don't know the outcome of any of that. I know Monday they didn't resolve anything. Oh, I and thought as it was over. And I as of today, I headlines. well, the WGA one was is over, and they're just waiting until SAG resolves theirs. Uh, if if SAG's is resolved, I haven't seen that yet, but. Because they're starting to resume like live shows with actors that also are, you know, th like they're starting to not play reruns anymore on these live shows during the day. Like a lot of people are returning. So why are some people returning and some not? I guess. I don't know. I don't know. What's I don't, anything that had a writer, but not a SAG member. Is that is that how it works, that, John? Uh. I mean, up in, so so here's what here's what I've seen, and I will Beats say that the, there's been various levels of um, of acceptance of this practice. But I do know that during the strikes, uh, some of the st some of the productions were offering um, to honor whatever deal was currently on the table, pending the outcome of the strike and whatever final deal would be. So basically, they were saying, listen. If you come back to work now, we'll give you the deal that we've got on the table now. And if something better comes along in the final conclusion of the strike, then, then we'll switch to that. But otherwise, we'll at least honor what's on the table today. So some productions went back to work like that. Um, I do, Like I said, I know that there were various degrees of acceptance of that practice throughout the industry. So it wasn't mm -hmm. entirely accepted. Um, but I do know that some productions move forward. Uh, with that premise, uh, as far as like stuff, live stuff going back on again, like the live stuff would not necessarily like reality TV kind of things, uh, not necessarily written, no SAG actors involved that theoretically never would have needed to have stopped unless the production companies or any of the other people working on those were also kind of bowing out in solidarity for the strikes that were ongoing. So Hopefully soon. Yeah, hopefully soon. And that hopefully. is it for the news. Why did you make me do this? I guess you have a choice. You want a war? Or do you want to just give me a gun? My father, he go toilet on my hands. Oh my God. Urine is oh 35 God. degrees Celsius, oh staves off the frostbite. How is this relevant? You know, fathers. That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, another episode of Hunter's Hard Drive. This is Loki, Season 2, Episode 1, Ouroboros, with a playtime of 48 minutes, directed by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, written by Eric Martin, and music by Natalie Holt. And the synopsis is uh, Loki finds himself lost to time and torn quite literally between past, present, and future. Um, personally, this episode was a bit much... I, I, I could follow it, but there was a lot of back and forth, and there was a lot of clever writing into it. The way he... In the present... His present, he tells the past dude to, to do something for the present Mobius, and it's kind of weird. Um but let me hear what you guys think about it. Um, let's start with uh, Joe. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh, go for no. it. Just go. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, Brian. I didn't watch it. Yes, um, I know. I'm, I'm moving on. <laughs> shout out to the people in, live, in the live stream. I just asked what, uh, who can tell me what show had a character named Rerun in it it was a no, live show a sitcom on tv it's old you'll get nothing but uh i'll give you a high five <laughs> small wonder um <laughs> i i know old. he danced around Darkwing duck say it Ramy. come on was it uh what's Rerun, happening yeah now? yep that's it that was it, that was it. Look at that, people. he had a sweet dance 
Um, he did. Loki. Uh, strange. Strange is definitely the word. Um, I liked it. It was creative, even though I'm a little the time travel quantum thing is a little I'm just getting a little, a little tired. worn out, a little burnt out worn on out. it. Um, a little burnt out, but in the beginning, I was just really like, okay, what's going on? But then when I kind of started to figure it out, it was clever. You know, the like how uh, uh, Mo Mobius was talking to – was that short round or – Yeah. That's the actor yeah. from Indiana Jones, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah. thought it was uh, – Chihu Kwan? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. When he was talking to him and he Jones, was like, Dr. Dr. no time for love. Um <laughs> <laughs> with the blocks on his shoes um, oh when he drove that's right yeah he drove um uh i uh uh <laughs> totally laughing no. um when they when um, when mobius yeah. was talking to him and and uh, uh loki was kind of going back and forth in the time and and how he was talking to him she, i like that whole thing that whole part made me start to like it like I, I thought the concept was cool um, when when he was getting torn apart and he was all weirded out. And Mobius was like, stop doing that. It's so horrible to look at. Like yeah. uh, that was kind of a cool scene. Um, definitely left on kind of a I think the season is going to be weird. That's for sure. Um, yeah. But I, so far. I liked it. I thought it was cool. So um, I'm tempted to keep and and i was late to the game i just watched it the other day because um i kept forgetting it was on forgetting it was on forgetting it was on and finally sat and watched yeah. it. i was like i'm kind of into this so um yeah, not yeah, crazy yeah. about it but it, it was cool well, they need so. to expand right because because it's all yeah uh Kang I mean, Tom, stuff so that it yeah, needs to build up Kang, that. yeah and then we started watching it and tori was like should we have watched the thing i was like ah we watched the recap that kind of like yeah. watch the Wait, last oh did you not watch or, season one no, we did, but like rewatch oh, it the end at least just to like oh. kind of put you in perspective. The recap but is is enough. Recap, yeah. the recap covers it, but I mean, Tom, mm -hmm. Tom, I never know how to say his last name. Hiddleston, Hiddleston, him, and uh, of course Owen Wilson. I mean, they're they're wow. so good in it. Wow. They're a good combo. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Good. Right on. Well, um, wow. how about Raimi? Yeah, I was confused. Well, and so I. It was, it required a lot of concentration to keep up with what was going on until they got into the room where they were talking to short round. And then like, then when Loki keeps getting kind of sucked back and forth Ouroboros. between the two different ports, uh, points in time and like having parts of the conversation with each version of, uh, of short round, <laughs> like he'd, he'd go back in time and he would ask the next part of the question and, and he'd be given a little bit, bit of instructions like, well, you should maybe make one of those tools or whatever. And then he'd pop back to the present. That was cool. And he'd be yeah. like, oh, like, oh yeah, coincidentally, I happen to have one right here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. It was a neat, yeah. was a neat concept. Way back. Yeah. I, I thought that sequence was, was well done. Um, and then obviously they've got to like get him into the, the realm or whatever so that they can kind of like stop this from happening to him. So, I mean, I think, it this story needed to kind of happen or this episode needed to happen to kind of get people caught up with what happened at the end of last season and then introduce some new characters. Um, but otherwise like, you know, Loki getting sucked back and forth in time or whatever, like that wasn't necessarily like mission critical to the story. But again, first episode needed to introduce the characters um, and get people caught up with what, where things left off at the end of last season. So, and it accomplished that. <laughs> Yeah, I think so too. Right on. Thank dude, you. My kitten said it was exactly Bill and Ted. <laughs> He's totally <laughs> right, dude. <laughs> Which most people don't know because it's such an old movie. Like we understand, and I'm going, holy crap! It was Bill and Ted. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, all right. right? John doesn't even know. He's never seen Bill. Yes, and Ted. I do. I do. I've seen all all the Bill and Ted's. Yes. Thank you, Sam Davis. Steven. Steven. Um, if you would. I liked it. Um, I thought it was... So some of the the little like nuances that they had there were like... I felt like... 
like um, Brian was saying, like at the point where they were all at Ouroboros at, at Obi's desk and they were like going back and forth through time. That's when I started feeling a sense, like I started feeling a sense of like normalcy in the episode. Um, I felt like before that, I don't know. I just felt like weird. I felt almost as panicked as Loki did. Well, because it was a continuation, right? Of, of yeah. the end of season one where he appears and no one knows who he is. Right. So I, and he has to, you know, yeah. I, I kind of appreciated that in retrospect that, that they kind of made me feel what the character was feeling at that point. Um, I thought it was cool how they showed the, how they visual, like showed the visualization of Loki getting torn apart and putting, being put back together. Um, yeah. And then I was like, I was thinking that is the first time that we've seen that other than, Time-slipping? yeah, uh, I think it was Hot Tub into, the, in, into the Spider-Verse <laughs> when, yeah. when Miles is getting like ripped yeah. apart or not Miles, uh, when Peter Parker is getting ripped apart, putting and being put back together. Yeah. It's like, is that the sequel? It's like the same thing. No, the first uh, Spider Verse movie. First one, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, and they're all like twitching out. Yeah, um, that was cool. Uh, and I really liked just how they're visually telling everything in this show. They're not leaving a lot of. It's it's really it's really like easy for time travel shows and movies to just rely on exposition. It's very hard to like visually tell that and Mm -hmm. in a place like the tva where we just literally spent an entire season of a show drilling into our heads time doesn't work like that in in this facility works differently right but now we're seeing like oh crap because of everything that happened now it's working in this manner i thought that was that's really cool um i one of the things that I, I read online was uh, there's a post credit scene where Sylvie's yeah. in, in the McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just a little Easter egg that, you know, where it says like the, the location and the, and the, the time and location yeah. where they go. So she's in 1982 McDonald's, but the location is where the future new Asgard is going to be. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> so I thought that was just, I thought that was kind of cool. Like cuz she's a Loki. Yeah. So like oh, yeah. they yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. end ah. up in the same spot. Yeah. I, I think cool. I read cool. I think I read somewhere that every episode of this season has an after credit scene. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Cool. So I so I, I might, I might be conflating that with a different show, but I think it's Loki I, that every episode. And so we'll see. I will know for sure this week. I, I'm so excited for the way that this show is this season is going to end because they've said so many times that it's going to tie in directly to Deadpool, Deadpool three. Oh, and because of, uh, because of the place called the, the void. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where Elias is or was, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, the fact that they even said like, despite all the strikes and everything that, they are not going to change the release date for Deadpool. Oh, man. I'm just like, let's right. do it. Let's go. Uh, do, do, let's go. <laughs> uh, do you know what sums up this, this review? Jet Ski is a brand. It is a personal watercraft. <laughs> it's like Kleenex. It's right. like Kleenex. <laughs> a lot of people. And uh, I want to give some, um, some, some people in the chat have questions oh steven did you finally get your starbucks cup they see it in the background so kira would like to know you got it and you phonic steph would like to know where Remy got his shirt that is a great shirt Remy. Ooh, that is a good one look That's at that on the her bottom. universe or hot topic? i think i think this is a her universe or our universe the, oh, the universe, the, 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 men's, the, the men's line. Oh, I think this is my own for sure. I can't. Would be a little... I will double you check. You can't tell us now. Yeah. yeah. Austin no, wants no to judgment. eat Take everything at McDonald's, and I suggest that you don't do that, Austin. 
Not everything. Yeah, don't eat everything just, at McDonald's. Well, not all the time, at least. Watch, watch Super Size Me and then get oh a Big Mac. Gosh, oh, what a, yeah. what a documentary. I never, yeah, everything I within never reason, guys. Come on. I ate McDonald's Moderation. after I watched that movie. Really? 20 something years ago. Dude. Even the McRib? I haven't. Oh, McRib's kind of disappointing. Like 30 I, years. I hadn't had it in like 10 years. And then I got it maybe like six months ago when it came out, or last time it came it's out. It's not what you remember, probably. It's, it's like, this is it. I'd, I'd rather keep the memory intact. I'm like, the, I'm not buying it now. I would have enjoyed it more if I just didn't have it. You know, just well, the memory. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I remember it being never, good. Whenever that movie came I out, it. I literally never ate McDonald's again. Dude, that's gross. That guy almost And like, I lived in a town but, but that where our only fast food overboard. was McDonald's, Carl's Jr., that was it. That's all we had. Did you see that in Big Bear? There's a, there's a new Man documentary Man. where <laughs> the guy ate. There's a new documentary where a guy eats Taco Bell for 30 days straight. And, and loses get, weight, right? He gets healthier. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so Taco Bell's not that bad. So yeah. Check this out, man. Um, I, I'm actually like looking at what I'm eating, and, and I looked at a crunchy taco. It's 150 calories. That's it. It's not freaking Dude, 400. You have like two of those and you're good. And you're you actually know? not bad. Yeah. A little, yeah. little snack, you know, a little, little snack. Much, snack. But hey, looks like it. But Tastes hey, well, it you know, the McRib's coming back in November. So. <laughs> I'll, eat, I'll eat my McRib while watching She Hulk. How's that? Brian, nice. Have fun with that. You, you know what McRib? It's like uh, you know how McRib's made. It's like the same molds that John's making, and, he, and they just they, totally, they, they, they pour they liquid this thing in there. They it's pour liquid cast. pork into the mold. <laughs> it's less cast. And then the the pork, it's like from the rooter to the tutor. It's everything, and they just <laughs> squeeze it into the mold. They take bologna and they melt it down. It's like the pig lips. <laughs> they, they they burn it down lips, and build lips, it up. Pig lips, lips and, lips and bits. The feet. And just feet and beat. That's what they make hot dogs out of. They make rib and leftovers. And then pour sauce hot dogs, all Brian? over it. Mm. I only eat Nathan's hot dogs that are all beef natural. Tired. Tired. Those are the good hot dogs. Nathan's. Nathan's glizzies. I was going to yeah, I was gonna be like, is that your neighbor? But... <laughs> <laughs> Why does that make me laugh, man? <laughs> like, what was your Everybody name? calls yeah, it a right. glizzy. I don't know. That's a yeah. yeah well, thing. Glizzy Gang is is a uh, deep dog rooted gang? at this point. It's what? Yeah, it's a deep rooted gang uh, in the Star Wars universe. All right. Oh, it's an God. alien gang. The Glizzy Gang. Are we, they're are they're we, pretty. Are really they're notorious. That? They're infamous. <laughs> the Glizzy Gang in the underworld. Yeah. Glizzy, you've never heard they of were, the Glizzy Gang? They're Boba Fett. If you you have to rewatch oh Boba goodness. Fett, Book of Boba Fett. Are you giving me homework? Hold on, Blizzy. Book it's of Boba Fett Underworld. season one. It was Don't the Google gang that, that the it's a bad it was idea. the gang that the mods Don't. were fighting. Don't write this down, Joe. Oh my goodness, dude, that's not an appropriate Don't. site. Don't write this down. What 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 site? What site did you go to? Yeah, what did you type? Blizzy gang. Oh. Glizzy gang. Glizzy we gang did, we didn't even mention a site. All right. Do, do not go I to think that. We need to move on. Just. Yeah, there was no do sign. What? This is a sign. Anyway, okay. I'll, this is your sign to move on. Are we doing? We um, are we Hunter doing Hunter? Loki reviews every week, John? We, I, we can if you guys are, are down to watch the episode. Let's talk about. Yeah. I know yeah, if, yeah, if you're busy, you're it. busy. It, it's okay. I, no, I get it's good. It. It's, it's, there's it's nothing else. Pressure, there's nothing else to review. But might as well do. Yeah, Ahsoka ended, and and I feel like uh, I'm missing a part of my heart or soul a little bit because I was really enjoying that. Um, Listen. So yeah, let's uh, Loki, let's do it. Look, we like Marvel, and so far no, yeah, episode Marvel's one cool. is is giving us the goods. So, yeah, I think it's oh, worth a yeah. little discussion. I'll watch it. I'm, yeah, it. absolutely. Like absolutely, like Rings of Power when that came out. We talked about that every week. Oh, that was epic, though. When is I that coming like, back? It's supposed well, to. It was two years. Twenty thirty two, I think, is season two. No. <laughs> oh, did it get pushed out because of the writing thing? Dude, I'll be. I'll be no, in no, because they're in. They're literally. in like, New Zealand, Zealand, right? So. <laughs> they film one one season ten years at a time, and then they release it all at the same time. So. Nice. Yeah, we'll have to wait a decade at least, but it'll be good. So, Lizzie Gang. For your information, the stinger of a Yalvik queen is a delicacy on some planets. Seriously. So this this is actual a real serious question for you guys. With it being mental health awareness, like we just it was it was a day recently, and now we're kind of moving into the chrome tono. Um, yeah, it's a sensitive subject, and I think um, 
as adults, as people who've experienced life, we experience mental health. Um, we try to maintain our health. What do you do to sort of make sure that you're doing okay? Like, how do you, how do you check in with yourself? How do you stay connected? Because I think that's, I think, I think our, I'm not saying we need to give advice because we're not doctors, but maybe you have a way to kind of um, make sure that you're all right. Because I think in this day and age, man, it's real easy to not be all right. And um, so that's the question. What do you do to? Not to come off. This could come off the wrong way, but it's almost kind of funny. I was like a pretty like sensitive kid growing up. Like through teenagers, I was very self-conscious and I was worried about stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then like when I hit my 20s, I met a group of people who, and they became my best friends and still are. Mm. Rib on you. Like rib on each other. Just no holds barred. Just. Is that, why, that, is that why you're such a jerk to John in our private chat? 100%. <laughs> Because I love so I rip on them, but uh, (laughs) like I think after that, kind of in those in my twenties, I was like, whatever. I'm bulletproof. Like like, nothing really matters. Um, Not that I'm bulletproof, but um, and I think as you get older and metaphor, you know, (laughs) Joe and Remy and I are going to test this. Um, You start to just like not what is it. Not don't care. sweat the petty stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, don't yeah. sweat the small stuff. Yeah. So that that's what I got. But find some friends that are just really talk a massive amount of crap on you, <laughs> and you learn how to toughen up. They're just words. They're just words. Yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't really yeah, yeah. go along with what you're saying. But no, it does. It totally, dude. It's no. it's it's yeah. it's, it's yeah. your story, and I think it's kind of. I mean, it's there's yeah. probably somebody that's gonna listen and say, "Yep, that's me," or "That's." That, that resonates, you know? Yeah. And I think I spent so much of my formative years, like in like elementary school, junior high, high school, I was just worried about what people thought of me, this, that, whatever. Like I was just so like self-conscious. Yeah. That's um, a lot of kids. I think it's self-conscious. Just a, lot of, yeah. a lot of young and, people. Yeah. Self-conscious sure. and um, not confident. Yep. Like I was shy. I didn't, you know, yeah, it wasn't who I am now. That's for sure. For sure. So, no, that definitely resonates with a lot of people. Yeah. Anybody else would like to go? Ramy, you you pulled up your your kitty cat. Uh, the- yeah. I although I mean, which to be fair, like animals are a great way to kind of relieve stress and decompress. So, yeah, um, yeah. I've got got my little. My little friend right here. So as she just nice. coincidentally, as we were starting to talk about this, came up and wanted me to pick her up. So here we go. It's like they knew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. John? Um, yeah. Personally, I'm pretty bad about myself checking in, like checking in on myself. Because I kind of, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And... Whether it sucks or not, you know, you don't have a moment to to be upset about it. You just gotta you gotta do it, and you gotta do it. But like like Ramy said, yeah, the the I, I've had my this dog for over a decade, and the other one, and we have the cat now, and they are the best because uh, yeah, as bad as your day is going, they always brighten it. Unless they do something crazy where you know they pooped somewhere, they did something crazy, whatever. Yeah, barfed or knocked something over. That sucks, but yeah, they're they're ninety nine point nine percent of the time they're always going to be there to like bring you back down to earth and 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 make you feel uh, loved, I guess, because you know they they'll come up to you and unconditionally, uh, yeah, you know, uh, give you give you all their attention. So that's good. Um, but yeah, that that's I yeah that. Pets are good for mental health, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you noticed that, Steven, since you got the animals in your house? Like, there's a different mood in the house with, with the addition of the animals? Uh, I mean, the kids are bothering me less. So, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, <laughs> uh, I think with, um, 
with mental health being such like a, I feel like it's, it wasn't really talked about when I was a kid, you know, like in the nineties and stuff. Mental. Yep. I feel like mental health is like a newer thing, and you you get like 100%. A, you get a lot of like yeah. the, the older generation that are like mental health. What's that? You know, but it's also the same generation that was like you know smoking's good for you. I've been doing it since I was ten, and <laughs> you know, um, no, yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I we that's were the... a super good point, and I was going to come back to that. Like we all of us. I mean, there's there's only like ten years between all of us, right? Like. We yeah. all grew up in a time period, and and honestly, anybody that was older than us too, where you just didn't talk about it. You didn't talk about it. You kind of it was like suck it up and move on. Like it wasn't, it wasn't encouraged. And, it was, and, 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 and that honest that makes it challenging for us to have those conversations with folks that are of a different generation where they're more willing and open to talk about it and things like that. So, like, it, I think that's something that I expect that in the next couple of months as we do this thing with um, on our sleeves that topic this topic is going to come up well it's definitely we're, uh, going to come up more we're, more. we're the sticks and stones generation you know we're yeah sticks yeah, and stones can yeah. break our bones totally. but words will never hurt us Wait, yeah. totally totally arguably it's just another we way raised. of saying ignore it and it'll go away yeah Which, just tell them to, to piss off and and, and yeah. what are they gonna, what are their words going to do nothing but then uh, yeah. obviously they they do uh, right dig deep in certain you know certain certain i mean spots and, it, 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 we're going to come off sounding a certain way, but it's funny because if you go back generationally and you just look at every generation and it's like, oh, you rode your bike to school. I walked uphill yeah, I walked both in ways. The snow. In the yeah. snow. Uphill and, both oh, ways. Yeah. You did yeah. that. Was I harder. was working at six years old yeah. in the cotton mine. I was mine. supporting like, my family like, you know, at but you know, 12. You're right. The, yeah. the truth is, though, and, and this is what I mean, I mean what, I'm, what I've come to realize a lot, especially in the last, like, 10 years for me is no matter the generation, like people are people, we all handle things differently. But like when you're going through a tough patch, it, it sucks. Whether, whether you, whether you outwardly express it or you get angry or you kick something or you just hide it, no matter, no matter your, your response internally, it still sucks. Yeah, and so, for sure. you know, each generation process it differently. It's kind of, yep. and I'm generalizing, I'm not saying like, for you sure. know, if you're in this, you know, just purely generalizing, but it's interesting that now, like people are allowed to voice how they're feeling. And I, and I think, I hope that by doing that, people are getting help instead of just sucking it up and dealing Following with it for it 20, for 30 sure. years. Yeah, yeah. And who knows what kind of damage that does to a, to a person, you know? Um, like I know, I remember reading books about like the, the, our greatest generation. These are like the world War II folks, veterans and stuff. And everybody says, oh, they're the, they're the, they're the greatest generation. Talk about mental health issues. A lot of these yeah. older people, they, I mean, high suicide rates, high, like just everything, like addictions they to, had to, to drugs it all. Right. And, and, and alcohol and, and yeah. abuse and just, man. And so you, th- you see the effects of it, but we don't talk about that. Right. You, you, yeah. We didn't. Now yeah. we're starting to talk about stuff. So, yeah, I, I didn't mean to go too heavy, guys, but no. I thought it was kind of appropriate to kind of no, it's ease much, into it a little bit, you know? For sure. And and much like anything is balance. You know what I mean? There's like yeah. balance. Like everything needs balance. And it's, you can have it's okay McDonald's, to right? have those feelings, but balance yeah. it out a little bit. With and Maybe it's a pork know, rib that kind of, you know, McRib that kind of. Might be a McRib kind of kind balance. of thing that 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 balances out. Yeah, McRib maybe maybe it's... and Loki or Taco Bell and She Hulk. Balance. Ooh, there you go. Look at that. You know what's on the McRib? Pickles and onions. Onions. I, onions. I would just be like, no onions, please, and then right. it would never touch my my little patty, my I'm little a... molded. Oh, well, I'm excited to see what happens in the next couple months with this um, Chrome Tono Pork too cast. because. I think we've got probably the most comments, uh, the most DMs ever uh, on that one post announcing the Chrome Tono uh, mm-hmm. yeah. from from surprisingly parents uh, talking about how mental health affects their ability to parent uh, their child, their children. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm really really looking forward Parenting's to tough. hearing yeah. some stories the next next yeah. couple months. To bring it back to that um, and touching on something that we, we talked about here, they're on the onoursleeves.org website, they have what they call conversation starters. Mm-hmm. 
which is a set of tools that like parents and adults and people like us that admit that we don't really know how to, like we grew up in generations that we don't really know how to talk about mental health um, in an effective way. They've got conversation starters on their website that will help equip folks like us be better able to meet folks that do have like that need to have conversations about mental health so that we can come to those conversations and like actually contribute and help and understand how to talk about it and approach it. So that's awesome. You know what helps with mental health too? Having things to do you like laughing. Yeah. Hobbies. Watching like movies. Movies. We Building do. costumes. Mm-hmm. Hobbies. Ho- hobbies. Hiking. Is a big one. Hunting. Outlet. Slushing Out- and gushing. Collecting sneakers. Slushing and gushing. Footy. Sandy. You too. Yep. Dude, how many sanding. times do we say sanding, sanding is like, yeah. uh, what do they, what do they call it? Therapeutic. Therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Pets. Petting your pets. The energy Going having walks from, the, from your pets, do. man. They, they yeah. just have a certain vibe. If you always are good. having... Always plus mine farts and stinks. If Sorry. you're having yeah. issues, like a mental issue, or if you're just down or if you need some company, we have things for you to sand. This is true. Oh. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Stephen has a giant so where you're yeah, but that's some true. Sand, but some props. Actually, Stephen yeah. has things to sand. Lots. No, because yeah, my, right my K1 spitting these prints <laughs> out like... Mwah. Cherry. Cherry. I like it. Is it shiny like yeah. Glizzy? Anyway, Glizzy gang. Is there a Necro in here? Yes. What? I'm Echo. <laughs> what? What was that? I love that. I oh, love that. My God. Is that the intro for That's our new great. segment, Steven? What it is, that? man. Uh, oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there an Echo in here? Yes. What? I'm Echo. Love Oh, that. my gosh. It worked better than I thought it would. <laughs> Oh that is amazing. <laughs> okay, so this is awesome. our new what? segment, Bad Dad Jokes. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else did the homework. I mentioned this the other day. So oh, I thought I this was a joke in so itself. One. All right, so have to be clean? They have to be clean, uh, right? Uh, no, I'd say not necessarily. I mean, so got, I mean mine, mine's borderline, so we'll go from there. <laughs> so I'll start us off. Okay, guys, so why was Darth Vader referred to as Lord Vader? Why? I don't know, Raimi, why? Because every time they called him Master Vader, the stormtroopers giggled. Um. <laughs> Thank you, good night. Oh, my God. Is there a Necro in here? Yes. What? I'm Echo. <laughs> I think that's the only joke for tonight. That's, dude, that's, that's, it. It. that's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. Steven, just just get that sound of intro sound. Bong. That, that that's like. Yeah, but bong. now you need to make four more because whoever tells a joke, it plays out with their. Oh gosh. That was good, Ramy. I like it. Uh... Damn, that was a good one. That's pretty good. This isn't a this isn't a dad joke thing, but someone sent me like a gift that was like, "You've heard of Elf on a Shelf, but this is the new thing, and it's Darth Vader sitting on a potato, Vader on a tater, on a tater." That's awesome. I love that, I love that sound, dude. That slap at the bass. That's a cool right, sound. So, uh, so every week, someone we need at least one. At least uh, one. I got it you. Doesn't... I got you. All right. Can, so, can listeners one, submit a dad joke? Heck yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be right better. There um, you go. Every, everybody knows how to get a hold of us one way or another. So. Oh, my gosh. Send us a dad joke. We will read it on the show. I think I will read it on the show. Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody will. Shine bright like a glizzy. Masters of Jets. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jets. Sushi. Masters. Sushi, sushi. Um, I think that does it for us today, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed listening to the show, feed that algorithm and leave us a review with five stars on your podcast app. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our road to 1,000 contest 
is underway and there is still time to enter. Just subscribe and you can be entered to win an Alpha Ignition helmet of your choice. Casted. Are we close? By the Dead Where Batch. Are we at? Uh, I think we're like in the sevens or something. Sevens or eights. It jumped up pretty fast. So. Nice. Uh, you can follow me at Stevie.kicks <laughs> on Instagram. Sometimes Twitter. Gentlemen, let the listeners know where they can follow you. John. You can find me at LA Comic Con whenever that is. December. First weekend of December, December 1st to 3rd, I believe. I'll be with my boys hanging out. Come out and see us. We'll be there. High five us. Probably throw you a sticker or two. Is it Maybe a little chili dog if you're, huck- if you're lucky. Yeah. He's throwing out chili dogs, people. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. <laughs> chili glizzies. Don't throw that out. <laughs> no. Brian? Uh, you can catch me at the forest. <laughs> In a tree. Sleeping in a tree as the deer run by. Taking a nap. <laughs> he sleeps and then walks right by. <laughs> They're looking up like, yeah. why is this thing sleeping in this tree? <laughs> I Supposedly just, that has happened. Like, yes, you know, snoring scares snoring. them away. I can just see yeah. the deer watching you like climb the tree and then wait till you They're get to the this top. This idiot. And then they leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. They listen yeah. to the pod. They're, they're looking at him they? through their night vision goggles and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's like what happened today. Dude. I was like, I, I was like a little bit. I'll make it quick. I was a little bit uh, late getting there, and I was like starting to climb the tree, and I was like eight feet up, and they make like a snorting sound when they're when they're in danger, and I heard them snort, and I was all, <laughs> "That's it, they're gone." That's and it. Then I was like, I'm just getting yeah, up and he there. He was like, climbing up, right? I was climbing uh, up to sit, so then I sat for two hours, and nothing ever came. Dang. End of story. Brutal. It's hard. Ravy, where can listeners find you? Thedadbatch.com. And Joe. I echo, echo. Is there an echo in here? Yes. What? I'm Echo. <laughs> Thank you again for listening to episode 61 of the Dad Batch podcast. Be sure to tune in next week for episode 62. Oh, and gosh. until next time, enjoy your spice responsibly. <laughs> <laughs>